John, is it happening? Good noon time, my friends. My name is Willa Mamet, and I am an independent musician. And this is chapter four of How to Be a Hero for Independent Music, which is also part two of So You Want to Have a House Concert. Um, I wrote a little thing, and I stuck it on my blog on willamammetmusic.com, and the little thing was called How to Be a Hero for Independent Music. And that was, um, I wrote it a couple months ago, but I posted it about a week ago. Hey, G. And, um, and it's been shared over 10,000 times, which is insane and delightful. And um, hey, Laura. And uh, these Facebook talks were sparked by um, my beloved partner, Sarah St. Martin Lynn, who is a realtor. And she, um, there is a gentleman in her community who has Facebook Live Talks Weekly and has people chime in, and uh, it's sort of a community forum that he resources people, jump starts conversations, and she was saying, you wrote that thing, why don't you talk to people? People want to talk, people like to talk, and um, people need a space to ask their questions and answer them, and so um, with my great thanks to her, and should you be in the Bay Area and interested in researching yourself with learning how to buy a house or know anything about real estate, uh, go ask Sarah St. Martin Lynn. She's pretty great. And uh, so these, these talks started because of her. And the first one, a bunch of you chimed in. And the second one, a bunch of you chimed in. And I thought, well, then let's keep doing this. So uh, last week, good morning, Mary. Or I guess for you, it's afternoon. I guess for us, it's afternoon, too. 2.02. Hopefully no sticklers yet joined. <clears throat> Uh, last week we started to talk about so you want to have a house concert and uh, I had made up a list of questions for both hosts and musicians to ask one another to make sure you're really covering everything you need to cover. We got about halfway through the list. Um, we got about halfway through the list and so today we're going to do hopefully a really quick recap. I'm not great at quick recaps but I'll be... <sighs> recaps, but I'll do my best, and um, and then go through the second half of the list. And I hope that you all have brought questions and comments and concerns and other cereal box communications. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna do that thing. So um, hello into the future for those of you who aren't joining us here at noon on Willa Mamet uh, Music Facebook Live. Uh, I hope this serves you as a video. And uh, should you be looking at this or listening to this later in time, please, by all means, send me your questions. Um, if you have a desire for a chunk in a future uh, Facebook Live chew and chat, uh, let me know. We'll do our best to um, get some people to answer your questions if it's not me. So you want to have a house concert, part two. Last week, we went over the first half of this checklist, which I will make available for you all next week. Um, <clears throat> Earl Grey tea and a while to spend. I myself have some Tulsi tea. Anyone else? Hey, Carol Ann. Um, this Tulsi tea, by the way, this mug, I have said before, but I want to just keep saying, was made by my beautiful friend Zoe Gardner, who has a Flora Pottery Studio on Etsy. And she takes plant matter, which is my other great love besides music, and fires it in with her in with her clay and makes the most beautiful things. And this is my absolute favorite mug. And and there's a plug for Zoe. So if you're a tea person. Um, okay, so you want to have a house concert, part two. You can drink coffee in it. You could. You really could. Um, I don't drink coffee because it makes me <laughs> nutter butters, but I do love it. It's very delicious. <clears throat> so you want to have a house concert, part two. So we started with the things that a host absolutely needs. Uh, so here's, from my perspective, what a host absolutely needs to have a house concert. And by the way, for I, I can imagine, based on those of you who have already joined, at least that I can see, you know what a house concert is. But it, for those of you who don't, it is exactly what it sounds like. Some sort of gathering of music, frequently in a house, although sometimes people call a house concert something they have in an office or in a backyard, whatever. Um, but essentially just a, a show, a musical show in a place that isn't strictly a venue. House concert. Okay, here's what you need to host. You need willingness. 
seems obvious, but I want to put it out there because sometimes people get roped into things that they don't actually want to do, or they discount the fact that their excitement and their joy and their willingness is really the first and foremost thing. So willingness slash interest slash excitement to have music in your space, your home, your office, wherever. That's what you need as a host. From there, everything else is details. Here are those details. Space for at least 20 people. From my perspective, less than that, and it's a little over intimate and it feels weird. Some artists might disagree. That's how I feel. Um, you need a bathroom. You need a spot for refreshments, like a little table. You need a place for the artist to sell merch, uh, which is merchandise, CDs, t-shirts, koozies, whatever people sell. Um, and Equally as important as willingness and interest, you need clarity about what works for you and what doesn't. Um, so your limits, your excitements, your ability to communicate clearly, your timeline, ability to delegate, all of those things. Really, really need that. Okay, so those are the things that are absolutely necessary to host. Hi, Linda. Oh my goodness, I'm so excited to see your name there. That just made my day. Not that the rest of you didn't. I just never in a million years expected to see this person here, and I am delighted. Swag, exactly. <clears throat> What's great to host a large community of people who you can contact who will come and hear music, plenty of parking, somewhere for the musicians to sleep if they're out of town and if you feel comfortable with that, and therefore dinner and or breakfast uh, for those people. So that's what, uh, that's what a host needs. What a musician needs, also willingness, excitement, interest, etc. If you're not interested in a musician as a musician, hey Gwendolyn, good afternoon. If you're not interested, don't do it. If this isn't your bag, just skip it. I love house concerts more than I can possibly have time to explain. So uh, I do them. I like them. Um, so as a musician, you need willingness. You need a date or a range of dates. You need a good photo. You need a uh, live video of what you will sound like in this context. So you can give that to the host. You can give that to uh, the, the host then also can show that to the other people. So if you generally play with a giant band, but in the house concert, you're going to be, it's going to be you and your harmonica. There needs to be a video of you and your harmonica. Uh, you need some working uh, social media and a website, a sense of what's ideal for you so that you can communicate that well with the host. Um, you're probably going to need a place to say, so either with the host or someone else, you're going to need something to eat either with the host or somewhere else. Uh, a musician's going to need a green room or something like that, which is to say a place to uh, patter their nose and gargle their salt water and just kind of have a quiet moment before a show. Uh, and you're going to need this checklist upcoming to give to your host. I should say for a host, you're going to need this checklist upcoming to give to a potential musician. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do, since we've already done part one, and you all can go and listen to that, but for newcomers, I'm just going to walk real quick through these questions until we get to the halfway point, and then we can kind of get back to the chewy chewy, because I don't, as is my tendency, want to talk your ear off too much. Last week we went a whole hour, tons of you stuck around. I'm delighted, and I don't want to take you far past that. So questions to ask, questions to answer. These are for both musicians and hosts. Um, so feel free to just make it apply to you. Ready? Go. What dates are available? It could be a specific one or a range, and you'll make things work. Have you done this before? What is your vision for this going absolutely perfectly? One of my favorites, please emphasize this with each other in conversation. Uh, it's, it's just a great way to start. Is this a regularly scheduled series? And therefore, what might your needs be around that? How many people can you comfortably fit in the space? How many people can you reasonably expect? And this is both for a musician's draw and a host's draw, talking about the community. Does the host need any money to cover costs or as a flat fee? Does the host offer a guarantee? How do you feel about tickets? Who's gonna handle those? What will you charge? Et cetera. <clears throat> um, what is your neighborhood situation like? Do you have good relationships with your neighbors? Are they gonna care? Are they gonna be there? Is this actually their idea, et cetera? What animals live in or near the house? Where will they be? How are they with people? Any other allergens, scents, et cetera? What's the accessibility? 
appropriate for wheelchairs, canes, service animals, what kind of seating is there for uh, elderly folks, for disabled folks, for people who need more space, might need to lie down, etc. Stairs, differing levels, uh, maybe the room is accessible but the bathroom isn't, these are things you want to front load um, for the host, for the musician, and absolutely for your community. And I think that gets us Ha ha ha. <clears throat> my previous life, I was a professional organizer. Can't you tell? Okay, so I think that gets us halfway through. <clears throat> Can you drink the water? Sure. Um, that's a good one. It's actually, Mary, you're kind of magic at this, actually. Um, this is the perfect segue because where we left off was to talk about refreshments. So as I said in the beginning, you're gonna need a place to have them as a host um, or as a musician, maybe you're traveling with a little table, you have your table, you like your table, that's the table you use, etc. cetera. Um, but it's really nice to have refreshments at a house concert. Baseline would be coffee and tea, maybe some cookies. Um, if you wanna do more than that, great. Um, absolutely make it easy to eat. Emily Post says that we are allowed to eat things with our fingers if they are, um, uh, if they have structural integrity. So it's okay to eat a raw asparagus with your fingers. It is not evidently polite in proper company to eat a flaccid aspar uh, asparagus with your fingers. But also it's just a pain in the butt, right? If you have a bunch of people in your home and they're all covered in um, juices of things because they can't just easily eat whatever. Um, Carrots and snap peas are great, hummus is great, chips are great. Hi, Peter. Uh, we're just talking about refreshments. So things that are super easy to eat. Um, so I would say don't serve soup, right? It's a pain in the butt. Um, I started host ho hosting house concerts last year, and what I did was I went to my local salvage yard and I bought 50 mugs and a ton of forks, and it's been potluck desserts. Thank you. We're definitely going to get there. It's been great um, because I, you know, it cost me, I, I don't know, less than 40 bucks. And now I have all, everything I need to serve refreshments, but da, 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 and I don't have to make any more trash. And there's always someone at the end of the concert who wants to help clean up. And that just like really feels good to them. And it's so great to give them a task that is just like easy peasy. There's not a lot of explanation. There's some dishes. Please do them. Thank you. So there's that. <clears throat> easy to eat, plan ahead. Um, if you, uh, Laura's just chimed in and said potluck desserts. I would say potluck dinner, potluck desserts, potluck anything. If you have a community that's going to, um, that's gonna love doing that, and I've been to some marvelous house concerts that did, it can be a really, really, really great opportunity for people to participate and, um, and then especially if you're gonna do something over and over again, people come to remember, oh, so-and-so is bringing her grandmother's chocolate cake and I love so-and-so's cookies. And it's, um, it's just another way to weave deeply in the community and it can be great. Please don't feel like you have to do that. Um, please don't feel like you have to do anything. Just get really clear as hosts and musicians what you're willing and interested and excited to do. Um, grocery store cookies go great. Put them on a nice plate. Everyone's delighted. Bunch of tea. Um, Please, if you are having people bring food, and if you are offering food, make sure that there are little scraps of paper and some pens out so that people can list what's in things. It allows for other people to be, um, it just helps the impeccability of allergens and all of the thing and, and makes people not have to feel like a bother if in fact they do fly flags in the dietary restriction brigade, bugging everyone about like, well, what's in the thing and what's in the thing, just put it out, make it easy for people to tag everything. Easy peasy. Um, bum bum. Potluck. Da da da. Oh, if you know a great chef and you have potentially a higher income crowd or there's a really special occasion, something like that, make a thing. Say, okay, we're serving dinner first and the ticket price is this much instead of this much, uh, or rather, this much instead of this much. Uh, it can be another wonderful way to have. Um, music and community be woven together. I would suggest not having the food and the music at the same time. 
kind of ever. Um, singing over uh, chewing and asking for more portions can be a pain in the butt. And for uh, as an audience member, then I'm sitting there going, oh, am I crunching too loud? Did I slurp? Da, 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 da. So just separate them. It's really not that hard. Um, which brings me also to then a set, uh, a sense of uh, sets. I'm trying to, <laughs> trying to catch my notes from last week. So I think that an hour and a half or two hours is a great chunk of a time, size of time for a house concert. You can, uh, if someone is really dead set on doing one set, there can be kind of a meet and greet at the beginning and a set, and then a meet and greet at the end. People can have their refreshments, they can buy CDs, blah, blah, blah. Personally, I think like two 40 minute, two 45 minute sets is ideal. Um, it doesn't allow the musician or musicians to go on too long, so everyone leaves kind of wanting a little bit more, which is how everyone should always leave. It also, um, the audience doesn't get fatigued, the musicians don't get tired, hopefully, and in between you have a chance to have a little sugar, have a little caffeine, kind of titter around, you get to meet the artist, you get to hang with your community, peruse the merchandise, maybe you need a moment to figure out which one you want, then you can wait till the end and buy it at the end. Um, so that's that's what I have loved most in house concerts. I don't know, a bunch of you who have so far chimed in are definitely house concert performers and house concert goers. Do you have any um, thoughts about the shape of the, shape of the evening? Um, I'm gonna say something else, but please chime in. Um, I will say, I think that seven to nine is kind of perfect. Um, sometimes that's problematic on a school night. Pee break, yes, thank you, always. Um, I think seven to nine is great. It can be tricky on a school night. Too much earlier than that, like six to eight, can be troublesome because people wanna eat dinner. And most people are willing to eat dinner at six and get to a show by seven. Not everyone's willing to eat dinner at five and get to a show by seven. Um, and not everybody can, too, because of their work schedules. So that's just something to consider for musicians if you're what you're asking from your hosts and host what you're asking for your musicians. Maybe eight to ten is the perfect thing. Um, it's just a question of considering your community. You know, if you have, uh, if all of your people are um, multi-childed families with children under five, neither seven to nine nor six to eight is appropriate. You're probably gonna wanna do a Sunday afternoon show, et cetera. You might also even wanna have childcare and have that be part of what you can offer. Posting the show schedule in advance helps. Genesis, can you tell me what you mean by that? I mean, I think posting everything in advance helps. Do the attendees all have herds of cow's milk? Totally, right? So Mary Gagnon has, has just chimed in and where I'm from, she still lives and most of our neighbors are dairy farmers. And those people are probably not gonna be out till nine because they're gonna have to get up at three and four to milk their cows. Um, oh, so do you mean like, um, the doors are at this time and the show starts at this time kind of thing. I'm just a little confused by, I feel like your statement is an iceberg because of course you're gonna post when the show starts. I'm gonna have a sip of tea while I'm waiting for your answer. <clears throat> um, also while I'm waiting for, uh, Genesis Furman. We're going to do a show. Actually, if you're in the Bay, we'll be at the Lost Church this spring on a date, which I suddenly forget. Genesis, will you tell us what time you and I are going to be playing at the Lost Church? I'm so excited about that show. Evidently so excited that it's drawn a blank in my brain. Meanwhile, though, I will continue with hosting a house concert. Uh, it's good to ask and to answer whether or not um, amplification is gonna be needed. So what's the space like? Are you doing it outside? Even inside, sometimes you want just a little bit of amplification so that um, musicians aren't straining and so that the people in the back can really hear every word. Uh, if that's the case, you need to figure out who's bringing it. Um, if you're gonna host shows regularly, it can be a great relief to traveling musicians 
to have gear there. So if you know that this is a thing that you're doing or if it's a thing that you've started doing and you're thinking about really continuing it, you can get some great used gear for not that much money. And, um, and, it, and, and then also you, you know what you're dealing with and then when a musician says to the host, what have you got? You can say, this is what I can offer. This is what the space needs, blah, blah, blah. That kind of clarity can be really excellent. The flip side of that is the musician might have the gear that they know works and might be bringing it. So then they're just going to need some power and maybe an extension cord. Although if they're bringing it, they should already have their own. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, hey, Em. Um, so Genesis was saying in your invitation, say, uh, doors are at 645, show starts promptly at 715, something like that. Then we'll take a break for ba da da and then the second set will be at this time to this time. It can also be helpful, um, especially for parents. April 18th, Genesis, we are, yes, April 18th, we will be at the Lost Church, Genesis Furman and I. Um, it can be helpful too, um, People who need to take medication at a certain time. It can be helpful to parents who have had to get a, a babysitter and hard one time. They know they need to be home at a certain time. Maybe they'll choose to leave at intermission. Hopefully not, but there you go. Um, so being really clear with your audience, what is happening when can help everyone just make sure to uh, engage well with you. <clears throat> Let's see, where are we? Amplification. Oh, are there instruments or genres that are unwelcome. So as a musician, uh, this is a really good one to ask, right? Like I'm, I am hosting uh, a musician this spring, stay tuned, she's gonna be great. And she plays in like eight different, eight different musical scenarios. Some of them are more to the punk and more to the rock and rather loud and absolutely amplified and have a whole drum kit and blah, blah, blah. And some of them are, pretty acoustic and kind of mellow and still really powerful, but different, right? And so we're trying to figure out, is it appropriate to have a drum kit? What, what's gonna work here? So that's a conversation. Totally, thank you. Mary's pointing out if someone can't make it for the opening time, maybe they can arrive uh, before the second set. So check with each other about what's really gonna work. Hosts, please be so, just really get with yourself about about the truth of your scenario. Maybe you really want this artist and they really want to have a big blowout, da, 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 but you know that that's really going to upset your neighbor or that's just really not going to work with the space you have or whatever. Just be really, really honest. It will all work out. Better if you're honest. <clears throat> okay, so um, I am currently booking a couple of tours, one of them from the south to the east coast and one of them from oakland to austin and back lots of house concerts and the main question that people ask me is how does publicity work to which the answer is nobody has a fucking clue if there were a formula everyone would do it that said there are a bunch of very standard questions that you can ask one another and it will all work out fine so please ignore my snark and here we go so um, what you want to ask one another is, is this show just for the community of the host? So someone says, yes, I have a, a standing house concert. People know to come. People have been coming every, whatever, two months for 20 years. We have our thing. We don't publicize outside of that. Or maybe they say that and they do. Or they say, I'm really not comfortable having strangers of any kind in my home, but I can absolutely get 30 people to come. I can guarantee you this, right? Um, so you need to ask, uh, are you comfortable with having the artists community attend? Maybe it's, maybe you don't put it on your website and you don't put it on Facebook, but you do send it just to your mailing list. Uh, are you comfortable having it be such that people don't know your address? This is for the hosts. Maybe you don't want your address online, but you don't mind people buying tickets, in which case when you set up tickets, you could say that the address is provided upon ticket purchase. Maybe someone has to contact the musician, and so the musician's kind of making a connection with each of the people, and it's not just having random creepers show up at your door. Um, 
again, think about all the nuances of this and just be very honest with yourself, host about what feels good to you and very honest with yourself, musician, about what you actually need. Um, I've had scenarios and maybe some of you other musicians have had this too, where I'll say, okay, I don't, um, I, uh, I, that's fine that you don't want this publicly in your community, but I need a certain guarantee of money. So I can agree to, this will work for me if, uh, I'll agree to not post this anywhere, but you can make up the difference if for some reason your community doesn't buy enough tickets that I walk away with $20 or whatever it is. Um, not a lot of people, uh, uh, no, oh, excuse me. Not everyone likes that. A lot of people do. Sometimes that kind of like hard line really helps a host get kicked into gear and then they have a sense of like where they need to be going with things. Um, some people don't dig that kind of responsibility, in which case it might, if the musician really needs that money for that show in that town, that might not be the best match with that host. What is happening here? Um, over advertise of get in the mix. It doesn't feel like a family only or a vanity project. Oh, interesting. Huh. Okay. So Mary says my musician composer son asks that his family members, um, with the same surname, not over advertise until others get in the mix. So it doesn't feel like a family only or vanity project. Uh, I've never run into that particular concern, but I, I can totally see why that would happen. Have any of the rest of you ever had that problem? Um, my duke of a cat is uh, arguing at the door. Excuse me one second, I will give you a chance to respond. Come, sir. <clears throat> so, hey, Susan. Uh, uh, Suzanne, I beg your pardon. Um, yeah, everyone pays more the better. The The thing that I would run into um, is make it clear, hosts and musicians, how many um, family tickets or complimentary tickets the host wants to have or the musician can afford to have. You know, if there's only space for 20 people and the host wants five of those to be their family members, that significantly reduces the uh, both the reach as well as, well, reach exposure and the income of the musician that night. So just talk it over ahead of time. Uh, don't make assumptions, do ask questions, and no matter what, then everyone knows they're on the same page. Um, let's see, Genesis, Facebook, email list, word of mouth, keep the shows intimate and special. See, I'm delighted wherever I go to, ha I feel like no matter what, a house concert is going to be intimate and special. So, um, you can also always make a private Facebook event, right, for you, uh, musician, and you, host, and perhaps the host's community, and maybe then the musician can say, oh, but I have three friends in that town, I'd like to invite them, yada, yada. Um, you want to figure out who's going to make a little flyer and who's going to do what, therefore, with their email about that. Uh, if there is going to be a Facebook event, who's going to make that Facebook event, who's going to host it, um, whether or not the information is going to go out onto any of the platforms like Bands in Town or Song Kick or Thrill Call or Eventsy. Um, Whose responsibility is that? And when does it need to happen by? Those are two really big ones. Excuse me. The other thing is it might be the, uh, the best person to ask in terms of local publicity is probably gonna be the host. So that's a, another conversation. Are there, um, like Mary's in my hometown, a lot of people use uh, something called front, front Porch Forum around here in Oakland. People use Nextdoor a lot or um, there's a couple local papers that have online calendars people use. What is gonna be the local thing that's gonna get people's attention? And that is if it's, if it's beyond the most private of the circles. And if it is also, are there other um, particular groups that might be interested overlapping? Where's the Venn diagram of communities, right? So, um, uh, I'm a Jewish lesbian. Often there is a, a group of people who identify that way who want to come and hear me make music. Or there's like if I'm playing at a college, the LGBTQ organization is going to get interested. Um, 
find out where those overlapping communities are and when appropriate, connect with them. Um, I also think it's really, really great, especially in an intimate and community oriented setting to have, um, to have a benefit. You could say, as I often do, $1 from each ticket and a portion of the merch sales are going to go to this local organization and, um, and to just be kind of stirring the pot of the community. And maybe that's too much for you. Maybe that's not enough for you. Um, you can also have a bucket out maybe next to where you're selling merch saying, if you want to just make a donation, we'll make sure that the money gets to these people. You can take the opportunity to have any kind of flyers, um, information for people to learn more about that thing. It's a really, really wonderful way to keep connecting and keep convecting the connection. Oh yeah, Mary's saying radio shows, whatever your community radio is. Um, it can be wonderful. This can be actually a great gift that the musicians can bring to the hosts, especially if they're setting out, if the hosts are new, of saying, I'm gonna go research what this is in your like listening area, and then I'll come back with this information so that you can know when you're hosting future concerts, these are the people to send the musicians to. Likewise, if you've been doing this a long time, host, you can turn around and say to your musician, these are the people, these are the radio stations, these are the press contacts, blah, 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 that we've had good luck with and other musicians have loved going to and go to all my sent you and have a good time. Okay, someone else, oh my goodness, people are saying so many things. How does a house concert differ from the use of a local town hall if someone's home is not really conducive to hosting but wants to host a concert or a concert series? Um, how is it different? I mean, they're two different things. I imagine, well, the thing is, when you're in your own home, you're in control of everything. And if you are renting a space or engaging with a space that normally rents, you're gonna have to deal with whatever infrastructure they have. So I would guess that that would be the main difference. And, um, and so then it's just a question of talking to your local town hall or library or community health center space or whatever space you're envisioning to use and talking to them about, what they need, if this would work, if they're interested. Um, and a good question, I think, always to include in that first bundle is, how could doing this also benefit you? Because maybe it really could. Maybe they do have a cause that they would like to talk about, or the library is doing a book drive, or um, a reading mentorship program, or something like that, that you could, especially in your publicity on Facebook, in your email, blah, 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 be just bringing, paving some paths back to that community need. And then everyone can be, um, everyone can be serving one another. Okay. Um, Laura, did that answer your question? Because I feel like there might be more to that question than just this little chunk. Okay. Those are some hearts. Is that a yes? I think that's a yes. <clears throat> okay. I think we have somewhat, okay, so we've already, I think, somewhat gone over this, but just to keep going down the list of questions, um, what's the plan for social media? What platforms are you gonna use? Who will make the graphics? Uh, who will make the invitations? Um, and then the other thing, especially with tickets, um, either reservations or actual tickets, and I believe in the first plug, great, I'm glad that answered that question. Um, in the first half of So You Want to Have a House Concert, we talked about, I just made a huge plug for brown paper tickets. Um, I think that they're, uh, I've had great experiences with them, and if you don't want to deal with um, reservations and ba -da 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 -da, it can be great to just make a ticket link and say this is what we're doing. Um, hey Chris, good afternoon. Um, Laura, I'm totally happy to talk via Facebook message or uh, pigeon or whatever but and if you have questions that you know you want to ask right now um i would be so happy to talk about them in part because i bet they will help other people and no pressure um so chris waters we're just talking about for those of you who have just joined along chris um kind of the plan for social media for a house concert um and whether or not whether or not you're gonna do any, is it really that small, or what are sort of the rings of privacy, connection, outreach, et cetera, and whose responsibility is what. Um, and as I 
just said, but we'll say again because it's so important. What is the timeline for that? So think of your show, reverse engineer it, and then decide who's going to do what when. Um, I'm of the opinion it's kind of hard to overexpose. Things get lost in the algorithm. People don't see stuff, blah, blah, blah. Consistently posting and reminding people, um, hey, we're having this show. We're so excited. Can't wait to see you, blah, 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 is a great way to get the word out. And um, picking a few ambassadors, looking them in the eye and saying, would you please help me by inviting these seven people? And would you then go get the word out? That is a great help also. Just sharing an event link doesn't, um, I don't know if it's a problem with the algorithm or if it's uh, just the way humans are, but doesn't seem to do as much as something like a, a direct invitation. Just putting that out there. Ah, so here's a very important one, which is why I put it last. Uh, both hosts and musicians, what kind of help will you need? So if you're planning a show for 20 people and you've done this 60 times before, you might actually just go, bibbidi bobbidi boo we're done, I don't need any help. Musician just arrived, we're going to be great. A couple people will, you know, pick up a few random mugs and we'll sweep the floor and then it's over. If this is your first time, I would suggest having a couple people with you. Um, someone to run the door, someone maybe to do dishes, someone to uh, handle the musician. Um, it's just nice to have some it's nice to have some friends around and ones that you can trust to do what you're asking them to do. So please don't involve anyone that you feel like is going to be um, going to take your time with supporting them and supporting you. Let's see. Delegate and duplicate. Thank you. Um, another thing is that can be a really lovely way if you have friends in your community who want to come and um, and can't afford it or would like to trade or participate rather than spend money and want to just sort of circumnavigate the capitalist machine, say, great, please come and do the door. We'd love to have you. Um, and, uh, and then they get a chance to, to um, offer into the pot the stone that they have. Um, so I would say, depending on the size of the event, count on getting between two and four people to be your uh, eyes and ears and hands and helpers. Um, someone, to, someone to deal with the snacks, someone to deal with the door, um, someone to support the musician, someone to answer questions. You know, people are going to maybe make some signs. The bathroom's this way. Here's where we want coats and hats and bags and schmoozles, um, et cetera. Um, oh, and I don't think we went over, someone else has just said something. Oh, okay. So Laura's saying, in her own town, she can practically get a particular facility at no cost, still open up a very homestyle concert-themed potluck event that supports a cause and an artist. Win, win, win. Hey, Zach. Yeah, that's an absolute win. I think if you don't want to do that in your home and you, and you have an artist coming who could fill that space, or at least make it not seem um, clangy and empty, go for it. Why the hell not? Um, I guess my question then about your question in terms of how they differ, it just sounds like they differ by being in a different building. Um, can, you, um, can you tell me a little bit more about your question so that I can make sure that I'm answering it right? Because it seems like actually you're, you're good. Oh, yeah. So if, if you are going to use another space, make sure you know the ins and outs of it. Um, what happens if something goes wrong, right? Is uh, not something worth dwelling on, but something worth being prepared for. So like if the power goes out, where's the fuse box? And if the toilet clogs, where's the um, plunger? And... Um, in an emergency, how do we get people out of here? All the things. Um, <laughs> nine birds and three dogs in a crazy life. That sounds like fun. Um, I can see why then you might not want to have people in your home. Just keep it chill. Um, but I still am curious about why, why your question was phrased as what's the difference? <clears throat> um, we were just talking about... Um, yeah, making sure that you really know. I mean, one of the, one of the, 
uh, great delights of doing something in your home is that you really do know all of your own resources. You know where everything's happening. Hey, Jersey. Um, Eva, uh, our friend Laura has just asked what the difference is between having a concert in your home or having, um, a, you can absolutely call me babe, it's really okay. Thank you for excusing yourself, but you needn't. So oh, excuse me for not excusing you, excusing yourself. Mm. Talking about the difference between hosting a house concert or hosting a house concert like event. I mean, I think probably much of that, Laura, is gonna have to do with just people's experience of the space. Um, I mean, and keeping it intimate and having the potluck and doing all the things will do a lot to have it feel similarly. And especially if it's a small town hall, and especially if it's their town hall, right? Then there's a further feeling of, of um, community. I totally appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so, let's see. Um, I have here, it's been 40 minutes. I was about to say, I have no idea how I just talked for 40 minutes, except I've been myself for 36 years and I have every idea why I just talked or how I just talked for 40 minutes. Does anyone else have more questions before I um, uh, do any recapping or finishing here? Let's see. Do, do, do. What else do we have? I thought something just popped up that was a question that I missed. I'm still sort of getting used to the Facebook Live thing. As I've said before, um, my main complaint is that comments go to the bottom and so I have to look away and scroll rather than comments popping up at the top, which seems like a much more intuitive thing to me, but I'm just a musician, I'm not a coder. So what do I know? So um, order of operations. Dates I'm in Vermont. Um, so I'm playing in Vermont actually in next week. I am playing with Paul Miller at the Whammy Bar in Callis, Vermont on the 24th. And I am playing a house concert in Montpelier on the 26th. And uh, the Whammy Bar is past the hat. It's all ages, it's wheelchair accessible. Um, the house concert is ticketed. You can find links on all of all of my social media, all of everything. There's an event here through Willow Whitman Music. Um, it is cane accessible, but not wheelchair accessible. And there is a dog in the house who will be away, but has been in the house. Um, if you wanna to come to either of those shows and a, there's a way that, or multiple ways that I can make that easy for you and comfortable and enjoyable for you, please send me a message and I will do my utmost to make that happen. Meanwhile, thank you for asking, Laura. Um, I want to talk just a little bit about order of operations. Um, so I would say one month is like the baseline for when you want to start publicizing a show. Before that is great. Six weeks, I think, is ideal. Um, if you know that something's happening and it's kind of a one-off, or if you um, have a series and you've booked it far out, by all means, let people know. Um, if it's a one-off and you tell people once, three months in advance, you will have exactly two people show up. Even that, um, even that would be kind of amazing. Um, people need to kind of get rolled into, oh right, this is happening, oh right, this is happening, right, this is happening, right, now this is next week, okay, this is in three days, right, here we are. Um, so it's nice to have uh, maybe an email to everyone uh, with a link to a Facebook event or, brown paper tickets, blah, 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 and something that you can keep referring back to. It's why I like Facebook events. I'm still on the fence about um, the ultimate additive that Facebook may or may not be to human culture, but regardless, here it is. We're using it. I'm grateful for it in this moment to be able to have this conversation with you. And I appreciate having something like a Facebook event because people can keep referring to it. You can um, post to attendees. You can thank them for getting their tickets. You can say so-and-so is bringing her chocolate cake. Could someone please bring something vegan? Um, like this. Um, the other thing about order of operations that's super important for both hosts and musicians is making sure who knows whose responsibility what is, worst sentence ever. Uh, you gotta know what your responsibility is and then uh, 
map it out on a timeline so that if you need to say, okay, let's get with each other in two weeks, we'll see if we've sold any tickets. If we haven't, we're then going to da 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 da, right? Um, just makes things go a lot smoother. Yeah, free, well, it's kind of free. Um, if you don't mind paying with your soul. Um, what else do we have here? I think I have mostly gone through this list and we have about 15 minutes left. And I would love to say to those of you who are here currently, um, and those of you who might be watching in the future, and isn't it wild what time may or may not mean, um, what, what are your questions? Are there things that, I, that we haven't covered today? Were there things we didn't cover last week? Do you have specific questions about your space or your potential house concert or shows that you want to play? Um, yeah, I want to make sure that, I mean, this, is, this was my, was and is, as it will become a checklist, which will be put up on my blog, No Word Wasted, which you can find at willamammothmusic.com. Um, it's going to be a checklist so that musicians and uh, potential hosts, potential musicians, can um, just go through it in their conversations with one another. Um, but I want to make sure that even though it was my best, um, my best stab at this, that I'm really covering other people's experience as well. So, um, so if you have questions, if there's things that I've missed, please let me know. I really want to include them because I want this to be of the greatest service to the most amount of people. So um, I'm going to sit here for a second and drink my tea and see if anyone has any thoughts. Um, maybe those of you who have played or hosted house concerts could tell us a little bit about um, like best experience, worst experience, things that you want to really make sure for people to avoid, make sure for people to include, something that went surprisingly well. Um, so while you're doing that, I'm going to step over here, light my kettle. <clears throat> Be right back. <laughs> okay, fave house concerts from Laura. Potluck gatherings that ease into the concert with dessert, uh, coffee, bathroom break halfway through the performance. I love the sense of community and making new acquaintances. I agree. I think it's so lovely to have the chance to um, experience music at a human pace and experience music in, um, in a place where you're not competing as a listener or a performer with an espresso machine or a cocktail shaker or someone taking a pizza order. Um, not that there's anything wrong with any of those things, but, um, but it's a, it's a competition for focus and it's, it's a competition in a group field. Oh, I do remember the thing that I forgot, which is please be so clear with each other about how you feel about alcohol at this event, how you feel about children at this event, and how you feel about outside food at this event. Um, my house concerts here are dry. That's just what I like. I uh, know plenty of people who have BYOB house concerts, plenty of people who have a giant jug of wine at their house concerts. All things can be appropriate if they are, so just make sure that you're clear in yourself what really works for you and clear so that the community can all be on the same page. <laughs> so Mary Gagnon has said, I'm happy to take Facebook friendship requests with others who might want to pick her brain, but watch out, she's wordy. Um, Mary, I've only ever experienced you as, as delightfully conversational, but then again, I'm the person who just chose to talk to uh, a screen for an hour and a half, um, f just for funsies. So then again, I probably would. Um, have you hosted a bunch? Um, remind me, please, and, and remind everyone else. Um, okay, cool. So Genesis says, Undertow Music Collective puts together awesome house concerts. Uh, if you're new to house shows, check them out. Started with David Bazan. Is that the correct pronunciation? Did I do that right? Back in 2008 or 2007. Uh, beware of local ordinances for public buildings, etc. Yeah, that's a good reminder. We, we covered this a little bit in part one, but it's really good to check and make sure what you're zoned for and um, how legal it is for you to be charging money. Um, whether or not you need to be really clear in your language, like a suggested donation. 
Um, or if you want to be um, selling, having the artist sell some something else, like a little postcard, or um, maybe maybe you're actually selling the artist CDs, and with the CD, or they're selling a digital download, and with that you get a free concert. Um, just make sure. Um, yeah, just make sure you're on the right side of uh, the law and your neighbors and anyone else who might live in your house. Um, which also brings me to, if you live in a house with people who are not just you, make sure that everyone in the house is on board for this. That's a really big one. Housemates, roommates, partners, kids, parents, whoever they are, um, just be, be of one decision. Um, because you really don't want someone being resentful that there are 25 applauding strangers in your house and um, the tablas troop going like this until 10 p.m. when really what they wanted was a night to meditate alone in the living room. Just really, really don't do that to people. Um, plan to plan an outside concert. Think about moisture and equipment and to invite neighbors with an earshot of parking. Okay, so here's Zach Slayton, whose family hosted me and Paul Miller. Paul Miller and, yeah. Me and Paul Miller last year, we had so much fun. That day, the weather had cleared, thank God, but the previous three days, it had poured biblical rain. And so everything was wet. There was a lot of moisture. Things kept going out of tune. The amp loved to misbehave. And I think we, though we had a super sweet crowd, probably didn't have the 150 people we thought were gonna be there because it was so wet and everyone kept thinking, oh, it's gonna start raining again. So just think about not only what is the weather doing that day, but what has it done? Uh, what might that mean uh, if you live in a super cold place? Planning shows during the winter can be great because people really want to get out, but also can be really dangerous and you might lose some audience if you have something like a sleet storm or an ice storm. Um, Zach also mentions if you're having an outside show, make sure to include neighbors who are within, within earshot. I would say that's a great rule. Thank you, Zach. Okay. Um, Hey, Don. So yeah, the, here's, here you go. Mary Gagnon is delighted to be a community resource for um, other people involved in music. Uh, darling, human, and um, ask for your questions. She's such a help. Um, hi, Helen. I'm so delighted to see all of your names here. Um, Outside. Yeah, if you're going to host it outside, be ready either to cancel or have a contingency plan or a rain date uh, in case things go totally wackadoo. I can't wait to see you in a few weeks at the Whammy Bar either. I'm so excited. Oh, and Frank. Good morning, Frank. Um, Frank, maybe you can answer um, in our last few minutes. I just put it out to uh, hosts, audience members, musicians, what are the things that you feel like have really worked or really not worked in shows that you've played or been to in terms of house concerts? Was there something surprisingly functional? Was there something that went surprisingly wrong? How was it handled, et cetera? Thank you so much. So here's Dawn saying that she, um, while she doesn't have a home to offer, she's happy to help promote in any way. So this is the sort of thing that goes such a long way for artists. Um, I'll, I'll say artists of my size, but, but really artists of any size, that if you have someone in the town where you're playing um, who's willing to pound the pavement a little bit and drum up some help and who you can say, okay, two weeks out, one week out, five days out, three days out, can you help me remind people? Can you, can you fluff the feathers of this with me? It goes such a long way. It goes such a long way in terms of augmenting numbers. It goes such a long way in terms of the gas in the tank of that event. And um, I will tell you, as an independent musician, I spend somewhere between two and five hours every day on admin. So just social media, outreach, booking, emails, talking people through how to host a house concert, um, planning my travel, da 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 not a complaint, it's just a reality. And so any amount of that that other people are willing to help with just means that there's more music. And, um, and it just feels so lovely along with the opportunity, for example, when someone buys your CD and they look you in the eye and you get to see them rather than something happening online. When someone is willing to help in that way, it, that kind of enthusiasm really, really, really boosts the heart. 
So thank you, Don. Goes a super long way. Oh yeah, who lives where? Team up. That's a great idea. So um, if you want to chime in with your location um, and whether or not you're interested in chatting, feel so free to put that right here. Um, there you go. Already, that makes me so happy. So so happy. Everybody's making friends. And that's the most you'll ever see me dance. Okay, saw it here first, folks. Saw it here last. Um, when you are publicizing your show, regardless of how public or private, or not regardless, but uh, in alignment with however public or private it is, um, definitely make connections. And, and you might even ask, like for example, on Facebook, you might be playing a show that is private, in Michigan, but you could say, uh, but the host said it's okay to have your people come. And maybe you don't remember, oh, I feel like someone moved to Michigan. So then you don't have to say, I'm hosting a house show in Michigan. No one can come except the two people who know me well enough to know my middle name. But you can just say something like, hey, who's in Michigan? Remind me, whatever. There, there are so many ways to be getting the specific information you need without um, blasting people's addresses all over the place. So for those of you who don't know, I'm from central Vermont and I have um, a huge New England community and I also live in Oakland, California, and I am so happy to um, support music, music, music and musicians really anywhere. Um, we are nearing the end of our time. I hope that you all keep chiming in with who you are and, and what you're up for knitting in community. And um, this has been the second half of So You Want a House to House concert. It has been the fourth chapter of How to Be a Hero for Independent Music. Um, if you'd like to see that, uh, well, you, those videos are right there on Willow Mammoth Music Facebook page. You can go back and watch them and see people's questions and their chime-ins. You can also read the essay, which is on my website, willamammothmusic.com. It's called How to Be a Hero for Independent Music. And it is a list of 15 points that I could come up with of ways to participate in um, smaller time music thriving. So go have a look. Um, oh, you're an independent music hero, Mary. That's for real. And frankly, all of you are for participating and bringing your questions and your enthusiasm. Um, questions and enthusiasm are the basis for all life, as far as I can tell. So especially for music. Um, please, by all means, send me questions. Um, send me topics. Let's keep doing this. I would love to have this space every Monday at noon Pacific time so that we can be making these connections um, and, uh, and serving one another and serving the music and cooking up good ideas and stirring the pot. Um, so there's that. I have a feeling coming up will probably be in conversation with some fun friends. So if there's people that you um, Hey Meg, if there's people that you think would be good for conversation, people whose brain you'd like me to pick, I'm good at picking the brain, uh, and I and I love to talk. So, um, anything else? I think that I think that that's kind of it for today. I'm gonna go from here. Oh, very exciting! Due to um, uh, due to the excitement around. Um, how to be a hero for independent music, there has been some really fun press stuff happening. Um, there is specifically tonight, I will be on, uh, not yet aired, but I will let you know when, uh, public access channel in Mountain View, California, talking on a show called Music Business Artistry. So um, that's something to check out. And I'll post here on Facebook when that actually airs live and you can you can see me there. I had some uh, lessons from a dear femme friend today and how to apply foundation. That was fascinating. It's just, it's a, it's a wide, wide world, people. It's a very wide world. And you just never know what you're going to have to do on a Monday evening. Foundation. Uh, thank you all for joining me. And I look forward to seeing your names and look forward to seeing your comments and your questions um, throughout the week and continuing every Monday Pacific Standard Time at noon. I give you big hugs and kisses. And I'll talk to you soon.